Oh. Okay. Probably one of the most complicated parts of an oscilloscope to set up is the triggering control. Remember how I said earlier how the way the oscilloscope works, you can think of it like a stroboscope. It's a strobe light that is trying to freeze something that's actually moving in time. It does so successfully by taking uh, snapshots of the wave at a certain specified starting point. So right now you can see we have it specified so the uh, sweep starts when the square wave is on the rising edge. That's when it says, okay, now I go and it begins its sweep. When it reaches the other end of the screen and the dot goes back, it holds and waits in time until the square wave hits the same rising point and then it sweeps again. If it did not do that, what we would see is a scrolling waveform. It's kind of like back in the old days of television when you're having trouble locking in the signal. The picture would roll and flip around because the uh, synchronization on your television was not in sync with what the station was broadcasting. The same thing will happen here. And in fact, what I'm going to do is show you. I have messed up the triggering right now so that we are not locked in. And what you see, it looks like two lines, but it's actually a whole bunch of square waves kind of smeared across the screen. The rising and falling edges are so thin, we really don't see those very much. We just see the uh, tops and bottoms of the square wave all mushed together into what look like two lines. But in reality, this is a square wave that's being uh, very quickly rolling around the screen from left to right. So to lock this thing in, we have to focus into trigger mode. Lots of controls up here. First, uh, the mode switch. I'll keep it in auto for now. That's the most useful mode for general purpose work. The source switch. Where do we get the trigger and signal? Well, right now it's on channel 1, which stands for reason, because our signal is coming in on channel 1. Then I have over here the slope. Am I going to trigger on the rising edge or the falling edge? And this, on this particular scope, it's a push button. Pushing in says it's going to look for the falling edge. But in the button pop out, it's going to be looking for the rising edge. But my level is all messed up. This level, you can think of that as an invisible line across the screen. And right now I've got that line set above my wave. And it's waiting for the voltage to rise above that line before it synchronizes its sweep. Since the voltage never gets to that point right here, it just sweeps automatically and we get this rolling, messed up display. So I'm going to move this level down. And we'll see, at some point, this will lock in. There we go, it locked in. So by moving that level down, what happens is now we're at a point that threshold has been set where now our signal actually does rise above that point and we have a triggering spot, a location to trigger off of. If I keep making the level go down, we reach a point where we lose our synchronization again. And notice I don't have to go far down here because our waveform never goes below zero. So anything left of center on the level control knob puts my threshold below the zero line and that means I'm never going to lock in. I have nothing to lock in on. Now, I want to show you another setting here that gets people confused. The normal mode instead of auto. If I switch to normal mode, what it does there is it locks in just as, as we saw before. But if my level ever goes out of bounds, either too high or too low, watch what happens. The wave just disappears. In the normal mode, it says, if I never reach my trigger threshold, I won't sweep at all. A lot of people are staring at a blank screen in the scope saying, what am I doing wrong? The signal going in, my intensity is turned up, everything, with, I've, I've tried my beam find, I can't find where everything is, what's going wrong? And the reason is they've got their triggering set on normal, and their level's slightly off, and the, the scope's just saying, hey, I'm not going to trigger, I don't see anything. That's why I recommend the auto mode. Auto mode says, if I don't see a triggering signal, I'm just going to free run and sweep the, the very next opportunity I get. So, um, we also have another thing over here for triggering. We have two channels we can source off of, channel one or channel two. This is useful when you're comparing two waveforms and you really want to lock into one and let the other go at its own pace. You can select which one of the sources is going to be your triggering mark for this stroboscope effect. Right now, we're only using channel one. If I switch to channel two, it goes blurry again because it doesn't see anything on channel two. There's no signal to trigger off of. I can also go to line. Let me switch to line. If I go to line right here, you see another kind of messed up display. It looks like, a, a, again, a sweeping or scrolling square wave. Probably wondering, what does line mean? Well, if you set to line triggering, what it's doing is it's triggering every time the power line frequency rises above zero volts. 
Uh, this can be useful if you're tr uh, troubleshooting a piece of equipment that's powered by AC line power and you know that every waveform you're going to be looking at is going to be something based on 60 hertz. So if the waveforms you're looking at are unclean and messy, you could actually get better triggering, triggering off the clean line power, which you know is at the same frequency, than to try to lock into the signal you're measuring. So that's a handy feature, especially for electricians that are working on equipment they know is line powered. You also have external. And external is exactly what it sounds like. We have a third BNC connection right here that I could attach another cable to. And if I've got a clock pulse or some timing pulse in my circuit that I know is going to act as a reliable triggering source, I can use that to sweep my waveform instead of trying to trigger off the signals I'm measuring. So lots of different ways to do triggering. For general purpose work, I recommend this. Using channel one to measure, use channel one source. Keep the mode in auto, trigger on the positive edge, keep your level pretty close to center, at least to start with, and you should be able to get something that locks in.